Today is one of those days where I've reset my alarm like 15 times because I'm just not ready to get up. My cat is next to me and he is just drooling all over the bed at the moment. <laughs> I'm alive. Before I get into this video, I just want to talk about my pitcher plant, which is growing three new pitchers. I am so excited. If you guys don't know what kind of plant this is, it is a carnivorous plant, so it eats insects, bugs, and some of them actually will eat small rodents and rats and things, but um, the type that I have is not going to get big enough to do that. There's actually liquid in the bottom of each pitcher, which is like a digestive fluid that allows the plant to, you know, metabolize the insects. And that is just so cool to me. On another note, we also have a spider living in the corner of our kitchen, who I have named Artemis. So far, we're coexisting and everything's going great. Today I wanted to do a video showing you guys what I eat in a day because as many of you know, my diet has changed significantly. Basically, I have completely eliminated sugar from my diet. I could probably make a whole video on my struggle with this because it's just it's just been so extensive. Um, I don't think everyone has the same relationship with sugar, but I do think it can potentially be a full-blown addiction for some people and I am definitely one of those people. It has been problematic for most of my life, probably since I was, I mean, definitely since I was a kid. I've just always gravitated towards sweet things. I've always had a sweet tooth. I have tried eliminating sugar from my diet in the past, but I think the longest that I've lasted previously was probably like two weeks. The last time I did it was right before I went to Paris. And yeah, I just have never really been able to stick with it. And usually, after I go that initial phase without sugar, I always just have a horrible relapse where I binge um, and it's not healthy. I don't want people to misinterpret that as an eating disorder because I don't feel like I have ever had an eating disorder, but I do feel like I have had unhealthy eating habits. I think the biggest wake up call for me was maybe six years ago when I went to my doctor for a routine physical and I got like standard blood work done and my doctor called me and told me that I needed to do a follow up diabetes test because my blood sugar levels were not normal. When you get a proper test for diabetes, you have to fast before the test so that it's more accurate. So I went back and did that and my doctor basically told me that I was pre-diabetic, which is very scary, especially for someone who has no genetic predisposition or no family history of diabetes. I also don't have most of the risk factors for diabetes, like I'm not overweight, I'm generally healthy, but according to my blood tests, I was pre-diabetic, which is terrifying. So that was when I realized I needed to start making some serious changes. I still was never really able to stick with it. Like I've lowered my intake of sweets over the years, but I still had horrible moments where I was just binging um, and it was like toxic for me. I am not capable of like eating small quantities because it just sets off cravings for me which make it impossible to stick to my plan. So at the moment I am eliminating almost all sugar from my diet with the exception of fresh fruit and I don't seem to have the same relationship to that type of sugar. And of course, when you're eating fruit, you're also getting fiber and other nutrients as well. So I am still eating fruit. I know a ton of people are going to ask me about that. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. I'm sure there are many of you who can relate because I think this is a pretty common problem that isn't discussed super often, but um, I know it's easy to see people on YouTube and social media who appear to be living healthy lives. And in general, I do feel like I eat relatively healthy, I my lifestyle is pretty healthy, but this was a very dark part of my life and I'm just ready to like move on from it. So 
At the moment, I have been about a month and a half without sugar, without processed sugar. The only thing I have had is fresh fruit and a very small amount of honey, which is also something that doesn't seem to have the same effect on my body. I mean, as far as spiking blood sugar, it definitely does that, but it doesn't seem to have the same effect on cravings and things like that. But I've probably eaten like two to three teaspoons of honey in the past month and a half, just very, very lightly adding it to some recipes. In addition to that, I have also lowered my grain intake and I have lowered certain types of carbs. So I'm not doing a no carb diet, I'm doing a lower carb diet, uh, but I'm not sticking to any one eating plan very strictly or rigidly. It's just kind of a combination of things that I think are working for me at the moment. Um, I have a, I have like one of those machines where you can check your blood sugar. It's like a finger prick test and you can see how your blood sugar is spiking after food and I've actually been doing that a lot to kind of check and see. I do think that sugar is one of the reasons I had horrible acne for years. I think my acne was largely attributable to insulin resistance and just overconsumption of sugar. But we can talk about that more in like an acne video, which I is much overdue. Recap, no sugar except fruit, lowering my grain intake, lowering my carb intake, but with carbs, I'm just focusing on eating slow carbs that are metabolized at a slower rate. Right now, I'm kind of in a rush because I have an appointment in about an hour and a half and I need to get to Beverly Hills after I make breakfast, which is pretty far from me. So I'm going to make a quick breakfast and I have a lot of fun recipes planned for the rest of the day that I think you guys are gonna really like. Before I start cooking, I do wanna show you guys what I take every day as far as supplements go. This is something that I'm asked very often and my little vitamin slash supplement station is kind of over here, but some of these are NYX. Um, the vitamin that I have been taking most recently is by Ritual. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these on Instagram or in other YouTube videos. At the moment, they are making two different vitamins, an essential for women and a prenatal vitamin for women, both of which I have tried. So this is kind of what they look like. Aside from the fact that they might be the most beautiful vitamins I've ever seen, I actually think they're a really good product and they are the sponsor of today's video. First of all, when it comes to vitamins, I am a big proponent for taking as little supplements as possible because I do think you should be getting most of your nutrients from fresh foods. However, I think it can also be helpful to supplement with a multivitamin so that you are filling in any gaps in your diet with nutrients that you might be lacking. For me, that is often things that come from meat because my diet is largely vegetarian and vegan. So things like vitamin B12, zinc, iron, those are nutrients that are a lot harder for me to get from foods. It can also be really difficult to find vitamins that don't have any fillers, any dyes. Uh, it's also very common for gel caps to be made from gelatin, which is obviously animal derived. So you do wanna be careful when choosing a product, but these vitamins contain no artificial dyes, no allergens, they are gluten-free, certified vegan, and they are also sugar-free, which is really important for me right now. They smell amazing. The essential for women is mint flavored, which I've never experienced in a vitamin before. And the prenatal vitamin is like a citrus flavor. It kind of just tastes like a breath mint vitamin. I don't really know how else to describe it, but it's really refreshing and nice. In addition, the box that it comes in is very minimal and fully recyclable. So basically the vitamins just come delivered to your door every month and they sit right in there, and then all of this packaging is made from paper and is recyclable. If you guys would like to try Ritual, they are offering 10% off for your first three months by going to my link in the description box below and entering my code at checkout, and I definitely think it's a great place to start if you're looking to just add a multivitamin into your daily diet. Aside from that, I also take a probiotic in the form of this yogurt, which I talked about in my birthday vlog. I honestly thought I really hated it at first when I tried it, but I actually really like it. And you just take a couple of spoonfuls a day and that is sufficient for your daily probiotic. 
So I thought I would have time to sit down and eat breakfast at home, but I'm just way behind schedule, which is actually more realistic because this does happen to me often, and I wanna make sure that I do get something to eat, but I don't really have time to make a full meal. This is just some peanut butter that I mixed chia seeds, sunflower seeds, and black sesame seeds into. And I learned that trick from Pick Up Limes. If you guys don't know who she is, I definitely recommend following her. I think she's actually a nutritionist, so she gives really great tips for healthy eating. So I will take a big um, spoonful of that or a knife full and just spread it on a rice cake. I feel like rice cakes have a really bad reputation for being bland, but it definitely depends what you put on it. And then to add just a little bit of sweetness, we'll add some fresh fruit to the top or some sugar-free jam, which is much harder to find than you would think. Or at least it's hard to find sugar-free jam that doesn't have synthetic sweeteners and like weird stuff in it. But if I have fresh fruit at home, that's preferred. So I'll just add that on top. These are apricots from Nick's mother's house. She has a tree in her yard. They're really good. So we have just a little bit of savory and sweet. We have protein, fiber, and it's actually really satisfying to me. And then I'm also going to have a plum as well. One of my favorite summer fruits. Nick and I are super into making iced tea in the summertime, so I've also made a couple different iced teas in the fridge, and I'm going to take some of this ice cream tea with me in the car. And this is my little breakfast to go, just taking it in one of these glass Tupperware containers, and I will eat that probably right when I get to Beverly Hills, maybe snack on it a little bit in the car if it feels safe. And yeah, it's not like an ideal perfect breakfast, but I think it's great if you're on the go. It should hold you over until your next meal or your next snack if you don't have time to eat an entire breakfast in the morning. Okay, P.S. I literally have the dirtiest car in the world right now. All right, I'm on my way to see a trichologist, which is basically a doctor who specializes in hair and hair loss. A lot of you guys know that I have an ongoing struggle with alopecia areata. Recently, it has just been so crazy. I mean, I've had it now for, for several years, and I do go through phases where it gets worse, and then it gets a little bit better, and then it gets worse again. So. It's nothing really new, but I just wanted to get a second opinion. In all realness, I feel like I know more than some doctors because I've just been researching it for a long time and I've read like every study and medical document there is on the internet to read. Unfortunately, the type of alopecia areata that I have is fairly uncommon and it does not usually respond well to most treatments. So that can feel a little bit discouraging, but at the end of the day, it's not something that affects my life on a daily basis, but it is something that I would like to find a solution for if possible. There's a treatment now that you can get called PRP, which is basically where they draw your blood and then they separate the red blood cells from the blood plasma and then they inject the blood plasma into your hair follicles um, to stimulate hair growth. So I'm highly considering trying that. It might sound crazy. Um, if you guys don't know this already, I, I love going to the doctor and I actually love getting blood drawn. I know it's weird. I'm back from my appointment and I have to say that entire experience is a great example of how some people in healthcare prey on other people while they are at low or vulnerable moments in their lives. Like obviously hair loss is something that feels really detrimental to a lot of people so um, when someone is going through something like that, they are eager to find a solution as soon as possible. And you know, it's a really complex thing that often requires taking multiple approaches to find what works best for you. I'm not about to throw somebody's practice under the bus on YouTube, but 
The guy that I saw today, uh, I mean, I wanna say he wasn't a real doctor, but he really wasn't a real doctor because you actually don't need a doctorate or med school to be a trichologist. It's more of a specialist, and I would suggest that if you are experiencing something like hair loss, you see a dermatologist first and foremost, somebody who is a licensed physician. I mean, the guy did not even look at my scalp, which is a huge red flag. Like, he didn't even assess what was going on with his eyes. He just listened to some of the things I was saying and then immediately started recommending some of his own supplements and a laser hair loss cap that cost $2,500. And I can see how some people in a state of desperation might fall for that. Um, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, on top of that, I just felt like more educated than him in his field of supposed expertise. Whatever, it was a learning experience. I lost 75 bucks. It's not ideal, but it's not the worst case scenario. So moving forward. Um, I also just wanna say, you know, if you are somebody who is going through something that feels really stressful body-wise. Whether or not you find a complete solution to your problem, I promise you that you will feel better. And part of that is just acceptance and learning how to cope, but there will be a time when you will definitely feel a lot better. So keep that in mind if you're struggling with something similar. Somehow I made it all the way to Beverly Hills and back in record timing. So I think I'm going to make like a proper breakfast for my second meal because the meal I had this morning was more like a snack. It's a little bit later than I would usually eat a full-on breakfast, but also, whatever. We're gonna do it. Look at all those beautiful colors. I'm going to grab this purple kale. Maybe some of this watermelon too, which is one of my favorite things to eat in summer as well. Quick tip for fridge organization to help you guys maximize your purchases and lower food waste. I always prefer to have my fridge organized in a way where I can easily see everything that's in here. That way it's less likely for things to get pushed to the back and go bad. Um, and we do keep a lot of our things in these glass Tupperware containers. I'm sure you've noticed in other videos. I will also put a lot of perishable things in mason jars and stick them in the fridge as well. Right now we do have quite a bit of food, but you can still pretty clearly see what's in the fridge and it's easy to pull out whatever you need. Also going to grab a couple of eggs. Oh, and some Parmesan cheese. And I'll also be using some olive oil, a little bit of sea salt and some garlic. With my kale, I'm just going to cut out the stems. You could add those to smoothies or something. And then I'm going to chop that. In one of my pans, I have just added a bit of olive oil and then pressed my garlic through a garlic press. And I'm going to cook that for just a bit. And then I will add my kale. My other pan, I'm going to just add a little bit of butter. So with my eggs, I'm basically just going to fry them and then grate some Parmesan cheese over top after I flip them. Right after I grate the cheese, I usually take the eggs off the burner and then let the cheese continue to melt. And I will check in on my kale. So I'm just going to add some sea salt on both of these. This is the finished look. <laughs> The finished breakfast, I have my eggs, my sauteed kale, some watermelon, a glass of water. I think all of the colors are just so beautiful and this is definitely a complete meal. Fruit, vegetables, protein. Obviously, if you don't eat eggs, that is your choice. My favorite part about the fried eggs though is definitely that tiny touch of Parmesan cheese. You can see 
it kind of like caramelizes around the edges. So it's just very slightly crunchy and it is the perfect addition. And yeah, this is a meal that takes like less than 10 minutes to make, pretty easy, nutritious, wholesome, very excited. I've just woken up from a tiny nap and I'm about to make my next meal. If it looks like I've been crying, it's because my eyes get so dry whenever I take a nap or whenever I sleep with my contacts in. Even if I shut my eyes for like three minutes, it's problematic. If any of you have a solution to this, please let me know. The recipe that I'm going to be making is like a pineapple fried rice, but instead of using actual rice, I'm using a cauliflower base, and I'm really excited about it because there's a restaurant in Los Angeles. It's what I think is one of the best Thai restaurants ever. It's called Ruin Pear. If you live here, please check it out. Um, and on the menu, they have a pineapple fried rice that's so incredible. So I wanted to try to recreate that with mostly fresh foods. Basically, all I'm going to do is cut up my vegetables, toss everything in a pan, and then kind of do a stir fry. And I'm using a whole head of cauliflower, which I cut up last night. It's something that I like to do sometimes with fresh vegetables, but to be honest, my cauliflower had some bugs on it. I know that might sound really gross to some of you guys, but if you're buying organic produce that grows out of the ground and farmers aren't using potentially dangerous insecticides and harmful chemicals, you might encounter some insects. And on cauliflower especially, sometimes even broccoli, I tend to find these little bugs. They can be either green or black, and I think they're called aphids. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. I know it can be a little bit alarming, but it's nature and natural, and you just wash them off and then eat the vegetable and you're fine. So I've already cleaned all of that and then just lightly chopped it. And then I'm going to be using some raw cashews, garlic, carrots from the farmer's market, a bell pepper, some green onions as a garnish, and then some peas. Um, and then for seasoning, I'm going to be using just coconut aminos and toasted sesame oil. Oh yeah, and of course, a pineapple. ingredients are prepped and ready to go. The next step is just to add my cauliflower to a food processor and then I'm going to pulse it until the consistency kind of resembles rice. Throw it in a pan, lightly toast it, and then add all of the remaining ingredients. All right, I have my cauliflower in my pan. Learn from my mistakes and do not overfill your food processor because I actually had to go back and take some of the larger pieces out and then reprocess them so everything was an even texture. I'm going to cook this for about five minutes, I think, and then add the rest of my ingredients. So I'm adding my sesame oil, coconut aminos, carrots, pepper, peas, a pineapple. I'm going to quickly press my garlic into that as well. So I'm going to lightly stir that around. All right, once it looks pretty mixed, I'm just going to cover it for about five more minutes and let it continue cooking. Okay. Smelling really good, and I believe it is done. So I'm just going to add in my cashews, 
mix it around a little bit. And then I will garnish with my green onions. Can you guys hear that fly in my kitchen? It's literally been haunting me the entire day. Even when I was taking a nap, it was so loud that I seriously started dreaming about it. That looks so good. I love anything with pineapple. Mm. So, so yummy. All right, that is the finished product. I think it looks pretty incredible. What do you guys think? I definitely had a couple setbacks while I was making this, but it was only because I've never made it before. If I made it again in the future, it would take a little bit less time. So I'll write those tips below for you guys as well. Before I try this, I'd like to take a moment just to tell you how much I've been sweating while making it, mostly because I can't turn any fans or air conditioning on while I'm filming or it's just so loud. I have like a straight up sweat mustache happening. All right. Wait, I gotta get a piece of pineapple. And a cashew. Mmm. Okay, it's actually so much better than I thought it would be. Only because I thought the cauliflower was going to be just so different than rice, but the flavors are like so on point. That's really good. Mmm. And now I immediately have to turn the air conditioner on. Uh. Later. Ooh. I think it's like eight o'clock. I don't have my phone around, but Nick is heading home from a session and I was planning on making these vegan meatballs with homemade tomato sauce, but to be completely honest, I just don't feel like cooking right now. This morning before I left for that appointment, I kind of like snapped at Nick too. Why? Realistic breakfast of what? It's realistic. Realistic, like. I, I don't want to talk. I, no, realistic. It's realistic. It's not like I'm shitting for a video. So I feel like a little bit bad. I did apologize, but I was just kind of rushing and I don't know. I felt irritated, not at him, just at myself for being late. Instead of my original plan, I have ordered food for us, which is so rare i couldn't even remember my postmates login and i don't have the app on my phone so when we do order food which is like maybe once a month we order it from nick's account and the only reason i'm doing it is because i know the place that i ordered from uses pretty sustainable packaging honestly ordering food gives me so much anxiety it just feels so wasteful so i do try to reserve it just for special occasions and i'm feeling like I just want to chill with my man, relax, watch a movie. So that's the plan. I think next time. I'm filming a video. I said I'm filming a video. I ordered food. Oh, what you order? Mixed up. You got that for lunch? What? The salad? Yeah. Dang it! Are you gonna eat it again? That's not cool. Apparently Nick had the exact same thing for lunch that I ordered. It was supposed to be a surprise. Our Postmates has arrived. And this is one of my favorite salads ever. It's just like a kale Caesar, but the dressing is a lemon vinaigrette. And then Nick got the same thing, but with steak. Apparently exactly what he had for lunch. And I also got a quesadilla and some black beans. My plan was to make dinner and dress up in a cute outfit, but uh, this is what happened. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe next time. So here is what I'm eating for dinner. Salad, beans, quesadilla. I really like these quesadillas just because they're super thin on a whole wheat tortilla and they don't have a lot of cheese. It's like just a thin layer, which I definitely prefer. Obviously, this is me eating grains but i'm not doing a completely no grain diet i'm just lowering my grain intake so i still want to eat foods that i enjoy and everything like that but i feel like uh for eating out or for ordering food this is relatively healthy and i am still getting vegetables and protein so i feel good about that
This is my last little snack of the night. I'm having a couple spoonfuls of unsweetened Bulgarian yogurt and then some cotton candy grapes. If you guys have never had these before, definitely try them. They taste exactly like cotton candy and it's insane. And then I'm also having one of these keto muffins that I baked. They do not have flour, they are grain free. And the base of them is almond, like almond flour, but the consistency is actually very similar to bread or muffin. And for these, I did alter the recipe slightly. I just added two teaspoons of honey to the entire recipe. So they're not sweet, but definitely still very satisfying. I'm gonna take a bite so you guys can see the inside. It still looks like a muffin. Mm. And then I'm just having a little bit of chamomile tea. And this is like my dessert slash just a little snack before bed. For some reason, if I don't have a snack after dinner, I feel hungry like as I'm going to sleep and it makes it really hard for me to fall asleep. I've had these grapes so many times now. I don't know what kind of weird gene splicing or hybrid technology was invested in these, but they are still blowing my mind. Something that I do want to mention before this video ends is regarding sugar. Um, I do not think an elimination diet is necessary for everyone and I would only encourage you to do one if it feels right for you. I would never promote like cutting out an entire, not food group, but category of food, I guess, unless it felt right to you. So for me, this is definitely working out and I do think excessive sugar is unhealthy. Um, and when it comes to cutting out sugar, if it's something that you're, you're interested in doing and you feel like you have a, a problem with it or you feel like it's become a bad addiction, which I think is common, uh, the only thing I can say is you pretty much have to go like cold turkey. You can't really like decrease your consumption. You have to just completely stop eating it uh, for the most part uh, with the exception of fruit because otherwise i just for me anyways i feel like i still have the cravings and it like doesn't break the cycle the first week really sucks the first three to four days especially but the first week is always really hard and then after that it gets a lot easier and then i would say after like two weeks you pretty much have n almost no sugar cravings as long as you're making sure you're eating complete meals and you're you're staying full throughout the day, you probably will have more energy because you won't be like crashing so often. My cravings have decreased to almost nothing, which is insane because I just feel like I've, it's been such a problem for me. So it is really interesting. And I feel like the sugary foods we're used to eating also desensitize our taste buds in some way because when you cut sugar out and then you eat something sweet, even if it's just like an orange, it tastes overwhelmingly sweet almost compared to how it would normally taste. So if you go back to eating sugar, it's like your body can't handle it. It just tastes unnaturally sweet. And I guess that it is in a lot of cases. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not quite like the vlogs I usually do, um, and it also didn't go exactly as planned, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. I'm just keeping it real with you guys as usual. I hope you're all having a good night. I will see you very soon in my next video and I will talk to you then.